Let's say you just received a couple of solar cells with a maximum output voltage of 0.5 volts per cell, which is way too low to power anything directly. So obviously you need to connect them in series in order to increase the voltage. But even with 10 of them in series, you only get around 5 volts, which is not enough to charge your energy storage, in this case a 12 volt lead acid battery. What you need is a boost converter, basically an electric circuit that can efficiently step up the 5 volts to 12 volts. But the question is, how do those work? And can we even build one by ourselves? Let's find out. Since a boost converter is a switch mode power supply, we obviously need a powerful switch. I went with this IRLZ44N and channel MOSFET with a pull down resistor on the gate. In order to control it, I used the PWM pin 1 of an 80Tiny85 that connects to the gate through a 100 ohm resistor. Then I also added a pot charmeter on the analog input A2 of the microcontroller, which I can use in the code to change the duty cycle of the PWM signal. To program the ADtiny, I used my homemade programming shield that I created in a previous video. And now that I'm capable of turning the MOSFET switch on and off rapidly with a frequency of 32.5 kHz, we need a component that is capable of creating a higher output voltage than its input voltage. The solution of course is a coil, in this case with an inductance of 100 microhenry. If I connect it in series to the switch as well as 1 kilo ohm load to the output, the current flows linear ascending through the coil when the switch is closed, because a part of the energy is stored in the electromagnetic field of the coil. And since the voltage across an inductor equals the inductance multiplied by the slope of the currents, we also get a positive voltage drop across it. But if the switch opens, the electromagnetic field collapses and pumps its energy into the load, which results in a decrease in current flow. Since the slope of the current happened rapidly and is negative, we can use the formula of the inductor voltage once again and observe a big negative voltage across the coil, which means we have now two voltage sources in series. And they behave just like two batteries in series. The output voltage is the sum of the individual voltages. And thus the output voltage of our circuit constellation so far easily reaches peaks of around 40 volts. But not for long. To fix that, I added a 47 microfarad electrolytic capacitor on the output to smooth out the voltage, which didn't work at all. While the switch is closed, the coil builds up its magnetic field as well, but the capacitor also discharges itself through the switch. And after the switch is open, we only get a damped oscillation on the output and almost no voltage boost. It's basically a mess that is missing one magical component, which is a diode between the inductor and capacitor. This way the capacitor can only discharge itself through the attached loads and when the switch is open, current can only flow in one direction, so no oscillation is possible. And that is generally how a boost converter works, not that complicated. With my design, I easily reach stable voltages of 30 volts with a couple of different loads. But one remaining problem is that with a fixed duty cycle we get different output voltages depending on how much current the load on the output draws. To fix that we need a feedback, which I created with a voltage divider that turns my defined maximum voltage of 30 volts into 5 volts, which is suitable for the analog input A3 of the AD Tiny. By changing the code just a little bit in order to increase or decrease the duty cycle according to a fixed voltage set by the potentiometer, we get a PWM signal which seems a bit shaky sometimes, but the output voltage however is stable no matter what load is attached. Of course, there are still small problems with this design that could be improved, like an occurring overvoltage when the load disconnects or a delay time to reach the intended output voltage but for a prototype it is pretty decent. That is why I got myself a piece of perf board with copper rods, soldered my components onto there and finally connected them all with silver copper wire according to my schematic. 
And if you want to build something similar, you can find all the information about this project, like the codes, additional pictures and the schematic in the video description. After the circuit was complete, I tested it out by hooking up a 50 ohm load to the outputs at a voltage of around 14 volts and reached an efficiency of 78%, which is actually not that bad. And with that being said, let's end this project here. I hope you liked it and just in case you're sitting in front of your screen with many questions then you should definitely check out my electronic basics video series. As always don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would be awesome, stay creative and I will see you next time.